there's the bear. They call him Daddy. What's up, guys? How you been? Uh, here we are again for another vlog. It's Wednesday. Hopefully, everybody's week is going well. We're halfway through, guys. We're halfway through. If your week's been feeling long, at least you're hanging out here with me today. All right, so let's jump into some what, you know, we're going to do all our segments. We have a fully loaded show this week. We have what I've been vaping. We have advocacy, the advocacy and news. We got uh, vape mail and we got a beer. Not sure which order I'm doing the vape mail and the beer, but we'll see when we get there. All right, guys, uh, you'll see here in the timestamps. If you guys can see, I have a new, nice little cool picture right here. It's very blurry because it's not focusing on it, but that is a uh, vinyl and vapor right there. He, uh, we got that from him in Oklahoma and that was really cool. And we bought a frame for it finally, and we have it up, up and running behind me. So yeah, awesome stuff right there. All right. So let's just jump into some, what I've been vaping. All right, guys, what I've been vaping. So yeah, I got some oldies, spaghetti, some things that you guys have seen a half a dozen times by this point. And yeah, um, we're going to start off with the uh, Brizzo. I got that all nice and polished and shiny now with the apocalypse on top. I still got to clean that guy up. It's like tarnished. You could see the, the world of difference between handling it and not handling it. And uh, in that, I got rectum balls, which is a key lime pie. Again, I, I mentioned this last week. And uh, it's going to be coming out here in hoping the end of May. I'll, I'll have uh, I'll have some stock for you guys and you guys will be able to purchase it and try it out for yourselves. It's I'm personally digging it. I mean, I'm tearing through it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, that's some good juice. All right. Up next, Dull Dime, number 40, TM Square. That uh, that money dough drip tip, really, really loving this setup. Really li liking this, and then that, as always, gotta rock that psycho crawler. You know, speaking of violent vapor, yeah, oh yeah, that's a DHD drip tip, drip tip too. If you guys were able to uh, get in on the uh, the Halloween sales and stuff, that is the copper rose. Which honestly, if you have copper mods and copper setups, and you want something to like matchy matchy at the hell up. You pick some up of those. Seriously. Alrighty. But yeah. Psycho Curler. Always a good time. And then uh, up next, I have my Cartel Revenant. I got a black edition with all that blue and green on there. And on top of that, I have the Lucid with another DHD drip tip. That is the color change one, I think it is. I think. I don't remember. I buy so many that I've lost track of what's what and who and who and the where. But still, just really liking that, like liking that the way that looks. And in that, I got some of that old fruit basket. Fruit basket. Let's see. There it is. Fruit basket. And this is like super steep. I've been I've had this since October 23rd of last year. I've been kind of vaping through it slowly because I tend to have other things I'm testing out, other things I'm trying out. So kind of goes into that. So yeah. I like the description a lot of people give me that it reminds them of Capri Sun. And you know what? I agree with them wholeheartedly agree with them. And uh, lastly, we got the the clown dreamer because we got to have a dreamer in our setups with the reckoning on top. And that is a half moon mods uh, drip tip. Uh, yeah, Mr. Patrick himself handed that to me. And yeah, really good stuff in here. I have a. Uh, my own like little concoction that I'm working on. I'm trying to test out and see how it is. So far, I I feel like the recipe is not quite there yet. I might need to like boost the sweetener or try a different sweetener on there. But hey, that that's that's how DIY works. And that is actually one that I'm trying to work as a recipe for a future video for all of you fellas that love this juice. You'll know when you see the, the video out. But yeah. Yeah, like it's almost there. It's almost there. It's almost there. I just feel like it's missing a little bit of sweetness. But yeah, that is what I've been vaping. So next we're going to jump into some news and advocacy and let's let's just get to it. I mean, advocacy, we all care about it, right? So I'll see you there. All 
All right, guys. So news and advocacy, as always, I, I tell you, keep up with whatever's going on around you. I, you know, local, federally, states, municipalities, you know, counties, whatever works for you. Just try to keep up with what's going on and what uh, could affect you when it comes to vaping or even just any other type of law. I mean, honestly, when it boils down to it, know your personal politics, what's going on around you. Don't uh, just expect things to work themselves out. And then once they happen to you, you get upset. It just doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. All right. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to jump into this. Uh, I got some articles up and we're going to read through them and see what's up, what's going on in the news. So FDA continues to pressure drool over teen vaping epidemic. Uh, US, the, the, the U, the U S F. I don't know why I'm trying to like, like abbreviate this, but either way, here we go. Uh, U S food and drug administration commissioner, uh, Dr. Scott Gottlieb has summoned jewel and Altria to FDA headquarters to explain what he implies is jewel reneging in its premise to the FDA to combat the teen vaping epidemic in September uh, FDA compelled the five selling vapor products five best selling vapor product manufacturers to submit their plans to combat what Gottlieb criticizes characterizes as an epidemic of underage vaping Altria responded by pulling its own system from retail shelves uh, in December however the tobacco manufacturer invested billions in Juul enough to acquire a minority stake in the San Francisco-based vapor startup. This isn't a Juul, by the way. This is the Zeal. Zeal by Biotech. You guys want to pick one up? Seriously, I, I kind of advise it. I'm not really big on like mouth to long jaws and all that kind of thing, but I'm really liking this. Uh... Let me see. San Francisco based part startup in comments to investors. Altria started that it's uh, that Altria stated that its plan was to apply distribution muscle to put jewel onto more better retail shelves. Then and therein lies the potential trouble for jewel and Altria in a telephone interview with CNBC. Gottlieb responded. I'm concerned. Did something change? Do they have new data? Do they have new understanding? Because they just made a very big commitment to support the expansion of pod based products, which they said contributes to the youth epidemic. And I see jewel for the part where it's part suspended, uh, suspended retail sales of non tobacco, Flavors making these flavors available only online and even online only under rigorous verification scheme. Altria likewise seems strongly committed to the FDA's goals to reducing underage vaping. In a statement to the FDA, Altria said at the time at the same time, we know that preventing youth usage of e-vapor products remains critically priority to Preserve the long term long term viability of vapor products for adult smokers who cannot or will not smoke. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's one of those weird ones. Uh, if you think about it, you know, with the youth epidemic, which, again, I'm sorry, but if you want to count 18 and 19 year olds, that is wildly unfair. And you you they're not very specific on what the fuck they mean on fucking youth epidemic. They keep making youth, but it's very broad scheme and a broad brush they're trying to paint with. And they're trying to just like make it into this one pigeon holding thing. But you got to put in mind how much more they're actually trying to go after or how many things they're actually talking about. So it's just a, a go around and it's a go around and a go around and a go around of what they actually mean, what they actually are talking about. But even then, I mean, 
it is one of those things of okay cool they're playing ball and they're trying to figure out how they can fix certain aspects of this but at the same time they're expecting just an overnight miracle and it ain't gonna happen even then kids will do what kids do be dumb i started smoking at 14 i didn't need flavors to start smoking i really didn't if you want to tell me i had flavors to start smoking then you're full of shit uh like i know a lot of people that smoke menthols but they started off on like marlboro reds or something of that sort so you know flavors aren't going to make a difference teens are always going to be teens no matter what generation we're in no matter what era we're in no matter what technology we have no matter what science we have no matter how much shit we throw at them letting them know hey this is dangerous for you you probably shouldn't do it in the first place that won't change a thing in the sense of kids are still going to try to defy their authorities i mean that's part of why we do have other things we do it's in defiance of somebody telling us no it's in the defiance of somebody saying you can't we push along past that sometimes for a positive sometimes for a negative that end result is a whole different thing but i mean seriously if you feel that i am in the wrong in this let me know and it's just i have a 13 year old and i i've seen her grow up she's a very beautiful bright kid that just sometimes you're just like god why 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 and it's very frustrating because i know she's very smart but at the same time i gotta keep in mind she's a kid she's going through puberty a lot of things don't make sense and she's trying to make sense of them in her own way so no matter how i explain it it ain't gonna happen it isn't gonna like help things it, sometimes it actually makes things worse you know but that's how it goes i lost the drip tip to this thing and yeah i know i could buy one for it but i'm not gonna spend money on disposable drip tips unless a certain manufacturer starts making them I already talked to her. She knows. All right, let's go on to the next one. Health Canada proposing stricter advertising rules in vaping. I feel like this is one of those the party is over kind of things, you know. Uh, you know, you they you can't like I know like Canada has like they're very pro vaping, but at the same time, they are conservative about it, if that makes any sense. In the sense of they still put like a skull and crossbones on a bottle of e-liquid. I mean, when I do the wolf bite with Frank and he shows me his bottles of e-liquid, we don't have this giant ass stupid warning here. We just, they have like this little skull and crossbones that eats up that much space on there. And honestly, that could have, that would have been something, but you know, whatever. So you can get, you know, like they have like their own rules and how they go about it and they they are very pro vaping but at the same time hey you got to understand that you got to watch how you advertise i mean let's let's jump into this and see why earlier this week uh health canada announced its proposal on stricter advertising rules for vaping as well as launching a new public education campaign targeted at underage audience that announcements by honorable Jeanette Jeanette Pita, Pitapas, Pitapas Taylor, Minister of Health, seeks new measures to address vaping by Canadian youth. An echo in an echo chamber of remarks that sound similar to statements by made by U.S. government officials. Taylor said, I am deeply concerned about recent reports that youth vaping is on the rise. This includes the stories coming out of schools across Canada. And emerging data that suggests that youth can young Canadians are taking up vaping at an alarming rate. Sorry, I'm getting a little thirsty. Canadians are taking up vaping at an alarming rate. I am hearing from parents, educators, healthcare communities that they share my concerns about youth vaping. We cannot allow these products to threaten the hard earned gains we've made in tobacco control. The proposed regulatory measures in our public awareness campaign will drive home the message if you don't smoke don't vape i agree with that if you don't smoke don't vape there's no reason for you to start if you don't have a need to like take a vaping there's no need to start honestly really there's no point there really is no point why give yourself another vice in life 
if you know if you you've gone most of your life or if you're young enough to where you could avoid certain things i advise for it uh personally i'm under the stance that if you know even with my kids if they're gonna take up a stupid vice that involves this stuff i'd rather they take up vaping but if if it was a perfect world they would take up neither that's just kind of how that is the current tobacco and vaping product art act prohibits advertising that appeals to youth in canada in their hopes to tighten this measurement health canada has published a notice of internet app notice of intent that allows outlines the governing body body's plans for new advertising rules the notice of intent has open 45 day comment window that closes march 22nd 2019 comments received during this period will be considered into drafting in a new proposed regular regulation health partners and gen general public and interest members of the industry all encouraged to provide their feedback on the proposal to protect youth and non-smokers from the harms and risks associating with vaping products. Uh, I don't know. That wording just sounds a little bit off and a little bit weird. I don't like it because it, it says that there's risks associated with vaping. So far, we're, we're pretty, pretty okay on the risks, but sure. The proposed rules would restrict where advertisements could be displayed to the limit their visibility to young people. They would also require health warning messages on permitted advertisements and would restrict the display of vaping products at points of sale. Health Canada will also post an additional document in March that seeks comments on furthering measures to address and reverse the recent trends of youth vaping, some of these additional measures could include examining the role of flavors, nicotine concentrations, and product design in making vaping products appealing to youth and non-smokers. Then there's a link to where you could go check out the full article or where the, the source material is from and all that kind of thing. So... I mean, that one's pretty cut and dry. I mean, they're trying to figure out what advertising they want to work with people in the industry, which that part is a good positive. It's something to look towards It's trying to find that middle ground of, hey, we want to advertise. But what can we do? What can't we do instead of just trying to get rid of it all? All right. So. All right. So let's move on to the next one. FDA bars tobacco products for some retailers. Uh, FDA has stepped in to enforce sales of tobacco products at two retailers, Walgreens and Circle K, over the retail's alleged failure to maintain age verification compliance when it comes to tobacco sales to minors. Two retailers are accused of engaging in a long-term pattern of failing to properly age verify before sell sales of tobacco products. As a result, the FDA is now considering a uh, prospect uh considering the prospect of hitting both retail chains with non-tobacco sale orders or ntso's before this means that walgreen and circle k be barred of selling tobacco products to any consumer under any circumstances in an exhaustive statement fda commissioner scott Gottlieb said i will be writing the corporate management of walgreens and requesting meeting with them to discuss whether there is a corporate wide issue related to their stores non-compliance put them and put them on notice the fda is considering additional enforcement avenues to address their record of by vi violative tobacco sales to youth we all share the important responsibility of keeping harmful and addictive tobacco products out of the hands of kids retailers and particularly especially those who position themselves as health and wellness minded businesses are on the front lines of those efforts and must take legal obligations seriously i'm also deeply disturbed that a single pharmacy chain racked up almost 1800 violations for selling tobacco products to minors across the country i have particular concerns about whether the pharmacy setting is influencing consumers and retails retailer uh, perceptions around tobacco products in a way that contributes those troubling findings 
The FDA will continue to hold retailers accountable by vigorously enforcing the law. We are also evaluating our data and other large national retail chains to identify other entities that also have high rates to repeat violation and are considering what additional measures we should pursue. While many of uh, our recent enforcement actions focus on illegal sales and marketing of e-cigarettes, today's announcement is required is a reminder that youth access to all tobacco products remain of public health. No child should be using any tobacco or nicotine containing product and no retailer should be illegally selling these products to minors as a part of your our youth tobacco prevention plan. We will continue to employ all tools at our disposal to minors, penalizing and prevent sales of all tobacco products, including e-cigarettes to minors at brick and mortar stores and internet storefronts as we work to ensure these products are sold in ways that make them less accessible and appealing to kids. That was a mouthful. Oh my God. I was trying to just get through it at the end there. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, okay. I, it's, I've said it before and I'll say it again. They're, they're just trying to grab at that last thing that they have, that last argument that they can have. They're trying to go after the whole idea of kids vaping and trying to get them off of them. But you know what? Get on to the parents. Where the fuck are they? And yeah, it's simple for me to say that. It really is. But at the same time, I mean, we want to talk about how there's a problem with things, but I feel that like at least in, in today's America, we are not willing to have conversations with our children. I know like personally, I grew up with my parents that they were very conservative, very, we don't talk about a lot of things. And I wish they would have had more talks to me about certain things or let me know the dangers of certain things. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, retailers have to be responsible. They have to do what they need to do and, you know, actually do what they need to do. And, you know, age verification, you know, check IDs. It's not that difficult. I mean, it does turn into that. I just wish that, you know, the FDA's kind of like crackdown on it wouldn't be so ridiculous. I feel that they're, they're taking it to that next level of stupid. But maybe that's just me. That's just how I'm seeing it. But eh, it is what it is. All right. So we're going to move on to the next one. As always, Casa.org, uh, Safada, Not Blowing Smoke. These are all pretty good organizations that you can follow and see what they got going on and all that kind of thing. Uh, Vape Radio, Vape News Magazine. Great sources for keeping yourself up to date. Uh, there's one more that I can't remember what their name is right now. But I get articles from them too. All that kind of thing. As always, my the articles from this bit will be down below. So if you guys want to read through them, get some more information, maybe look up some other stuff. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move into some, I don't know, I, I, I'll leave it up to, to future me here in like two minutes and we'll, we'll set out for the next bit. All right. Catch you guys there. All right, guys, so we're going to jump into some vape mail next. Uh, I got some packages. It's not like a whole lot, but it's a lot of stuff all at the same time, which is pretty cool. So, you know, it's stuff that I've gotten for future reviews and things like that, and I am happy to share with you guys. So here, let's jump into it. Here is the first package. It's a nice, uh, hefty, hefty box. Hefty box. And let's see. All right. Like, I like packages because they come in and it gives me cool stuff inside the packages, but I open boxes for a living, so it's like my, my favorite and least favorite activity all at the same time. All right, so some packaging material. All right, we're going to start off with this guy. We're probably going to do a retro vape with it, but yeah, it's the Noisy Cricket, the original Noisy Cricket. I am excited. That I am excited to like look at. We got the uh, Bunker RDA by Asmodus. Which I'm excited about that guy. 
We got the uh, dog RTA from Asmodus. Yeah, got a lot of Asmodus stuff. I didn't realize that was Asmodus that did that one. Uh, we got the Serpent Elevate. Yeah, we're going to review that guy too. We're going to be doing that one. So, very exciting stuff with that. I think, did I get, is that the gun metal? It says metal. Looks really cool as a gun metal. I like it. And then we got the, uh, the ORF, or ORF, or OFF. I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah, it's the, uh, the gear RTA. We're going to be reviewing that guy. So, yeah, lots of, lots of reviews coming up. Lots of stuff to look into. Then we got some some uh, Freemax coils, cause here's the deal. This guy right here is actually uh, compatible with the uh, with the Mesh Pro coils from the Freemax Mesh Pro coils. So we're gonna try them out in there and see if their coil is better or if this coil is better. And this is the Canthal Quad point one fives. So very exciting stuff with that. Can't wait to try that. Then we're doing some of that that uh that off what is this night chrome again i don't remember what was what the hell was this material either way we got some of those off next mesh coils so we're gonna try that stuff out see how that goes see if it's better than the one that that comes with it and then lastly we got the off vape tool kit which i'm excited this i'm gonna review it and hopefully if I enjoy it and I like it, I will be using this in my shop and I will probably get rid of the other kit that I have in there at the moment. But yeah, I'm excited about this. Really, really good stuff. All right. So I got one more guy over here and it's, it, it's a simple package. You guys will see what I mean by what I mean by it, but still I'm excited about this because there's something in here that, uh, that, uh, I get to try out and we'll see maybe maybe I'll add it to the shop as well but yeah so okay as you guys know I am a native Wix guy so I got a ton of native Wix but they have come out with the new version the platinum plus so we're gonna be looking at this we'll see how it works how it does might do a review on that and or at least a compare and contrast between the two and then from there we're gonna we're gonna do some uh might add that to the shop too so part of like me reviewing things is also seeing what i want on my shop what i what products do i believe in and almost everything i've added to the shop i have personally owned or used at one extent or another that's the only reason any of these things are on there otherwise i am not uh i'm not the kind of person that just adds things for the sake of adding them you know what i mean I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this guy. This is mainly because I want to build it here soon, and I have a home for it. And we will, uh, we will vape on it because that's how we, that's how we roll. I, I've just been really curious on this tank because it's supposed to be really tiny, and it's supposed to be, uh. supposed to be really tiny and it's a single coil so i'm very very curious on how it works and all that kind of thing so yeah okay so that is the top of the tank right there wow that is tiny and it's still a 510 one okay sure that's a thing and then there's like little baggies in here there's a coil, some cotton, all sorts of, of goodies. Uh, there's like an extra 510 pin, so I was curious if it was like a, a squonkable 510 or what kind of 510 it was. Yeah, we're gonna go with the with the with the black drip tip. Uh, 
if it'll go in. All right. Yeah, I mean, that thing is tiny, dude. Uh, I don't know. Well, here, like, this is a sub ohm tank, right? This is how it would sit on there. That's how much smaller it is. Or here, I have this for an RTA, which honestly, I might end up switching these two out. But that is the wake tank, the gear tank. And honestly, this is this is what I kind of wanted this for. Look at that, how that sits on there. That is pretty, pretty nice. It's nice and not, it's not like all big and tall and sitting all over the place. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and then I have one more thing I want to set up. I'm not going to like set it up, set it up, but I do want to, because I need to redo the coils on the atomizer itself, but just something I'm curious to look at. But yeah, I got lots of good stuff in today that we're going to, we're going to do some reviews and some first looks and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I think I'm doing two first looks right now. Y'all know the noisy cricket came out quite a while ago. I mean, by today's standards, this is an ancient, ancient thing. But I remember when they first came out, I always wanted to try it. But I didn't know about series vaping. I hadn't gotten into series vaping. I didn't even try. I hadn't even tried my first mech at that point. So it was one of those things that I was always worried. Oh, look at that. It's insane how simple this thing really is. There's two contacts at the other end. Yeah, this is like my first time looking at one of these. There's two contacts at the other end. You just drop your batteries in there. At the point, I kind of want to get another, like, uh, Twisted mess is squared. There it goes. I was like, why didn't it go in there? That looks clean, dude. I like that. Of course, I don't have batteries in this because I, the build I have in here, I think it's at a 0 0.26. But look at that. It's not like a one-to-one -one color, but still, I'm liking that. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the, the build I have in there. So, And even then, that doesn't amount to, like, I think it's a 0 0.26, 0 0.29. So... I might have to rebuild that guy before we vape it. Yeah, I'm gonna do a retro vape with that. Like how compact and tiny that is. That is that is tiny. Alrighty. So that 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 settled over there. I haven't really used this guy in forever, so this is the the V2. I don't know. Should I check anything else? I have the bunker right here in front of me.
goes. Oh, you can see it in there. Some of the keys. Okay, so I don't know if that came out properly or not, but sure, that's a thing. That seriously looks so cool. I'm not gonna lie, this thing might live here. That looks mean right there. Yeah, that's the Bunker RDA. The single coil guy. Ooh, maybe this thing. Well, I have options over here, so I'm looking at, at my options. Not going to lie, that looks really cool like that. Okay, so yeah, I think that that's its new home right there. And Originally, I had the goat on there, but I think that is going to live there now. Might build this up and we'll uh, use it here soon. All right. All right. Okay. So it has like places where it properly drops, I guess. Yeah, it does. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So it allows you to turn it. Okay. All right. Well, well that's enough for that. Um, really, that, that looks really nice. Okay, so we're going to go into our last segment. We're going to try some beer, and yeah, we're going to wrap it up after that. So I'll catch you guys down for some beer. All right, guys, so here we are for a beer. We uh, This week we are doing uh, this guy right here, the Boulevard Chocolate Ale. Yeah, from, uh, well, yeah, it's Boulevard. It is Chocolate Ale. With Coco Nibs Chocolate and Vanilla Extract, a collaborative with Christopher Elbow, limited release. Uh, what else? What else do we have? It's a 8.8, 8, 8.7 ABV. It is uh, 24 IBUs, and then like a lot of warning stuff. Not a whole lot of information on this. Uh, I'm gonna look up. See if I can find anything on uh, any like beer forums and stuff. Okay. All right. So this is what I was able to find. One of the brightest stars in the city filled with culinary treasures. Christopher Elbow has uh, been handcrafting masterpieces in chocolate for more than 15 years. In that time, the reputation of his artistic delicacies has sp spread around the globe. Elbow's sweet sweets are... Distinguished by their use of unusual and sometimes surprising flavors and ingredients in which uh, Aventures, a spirit, we joined forces to bring you a very special chocolate ale for full of surprises. And this distinctive copper colored ale returns from three year hiatus, medium bodied and effervescent. The aroma evokes dried fruits, earth and cocoa. With just a hint of spicy hops, moth-watering flavors, and of Valhora, Valhora chocolate from Dominican cocoa. Nibs weave seemingly between the layers of honey, brown sugar, caramel, nul nutty malt, deftly harmonizing and rounding into a luscious, lingering finish. Oh, that that sounds beautiful. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna break into this guy. I got my, my trusty keys here. Jingle, jingle. Mostly because I got a, that guy. And we're going we're gonna to give this a pour. I can get it undone over here. Yeah, that was a pain for some reason. And something fell. Oh, my God. Never mind. That, that's stupid. All right, so...
smells interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. I don't know, I always manage to get the pour to where it doesn't really uh, do that. But as you can tell, it's very uh, red in color. Reminds me more like of an Irish red. Didn't have much head, but it's also uh, the way you pour it also dictates how much head you're going to end up getting. Is that a crack on my glass? There looks like a crack on my glass. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. It's very see-through. I don't know if you guys can see me through there. Yeah, you could kind of see me through there. All right, let's go in for the nose. It reminds me of like a watered down stout, if that makes sense. There's a kind of a pungent aroma I'm not really liking. Okay, I'm starting to get some of that chocolate. At first I was getting more like a bad fart or something. It was really weird. Yeah, there's just like this one smell that's making my nose twinge, but then I get that chocolate right afterwards, which kind of makes up for it a little bit, but I'm not sure. There's just something in that smell I'm not liking. Uh, all right, so I did build up that that uh, that bunker. We have it built it up, and in that I have a uh, cream, cereal cream. I uh, felt like that would work with this since it's a chocolate beer, and we're going to give this a try. We're probably going to give a uh, psycho crawler a try. Some psycho crawler. We're going to give rectum balls a try. And I have to check on it. I think I still have the juice around here somewhere. I have something in this one that might work. I'll be right back. All right. So in that I have uh, a commies uh, hot mocha or mocha frap. So we're going to give that a try. We got a nice, nice little uh, array of things here that we can try out and see what works as a beer pairing. All right, so let's just jump into this. Uh, we're gonna start with the with the coffee. It's an obvious choice. Let's just do it. Actually, just realized I didn't even go for the taste. Let's let's do the taste real quick. There's just something in here. There's the chocolate almost like a coffee likeness but not really i could taste some of the vanilla oh, there's just one taste in here that's just making me like want to vomit i don't know maybe it's the vanilla it reminds me of like a root beer actually you know what now that i think about it, it might be that like root beer kind of like flavor and i'm not a root beer guy i mean i know there are some of you out there that love root beer and hey more for you but not it's not a thing i really like to me, root beer is something I do not enjoy at any level. So, all right, let's 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 do the pairing and see how this works out. Uh, hopefully, that flavoring doesn't really ruin this beer for me, but we'll see. See, that wasn't bad. That was actually really good. It brings out more of the chocolate. It's making the chocolate linger a little bit, but it's really good chocolate, actually. It's a really uh, creamy, smooth chocolate. Like, wow, that's actually surprisingly good. That that made that so much better. Um, all right, so next we're going to move into this one, which I feel like it's a long shot because it's a fruit cereal. But you never know. I mean, I know for sure, like, coffees and other chocolate vapes, like Mint Me from my line, would work with this kind of thing. But, you know, and then coffees, which I still need to release a coffee juice. I, I'll be honest, I'm surprised I haven't released a coffee juice. Uh, co coffee was what got me off of cigarettes. And I feel I need to, I owe it an homage, if anything. But, yeah, uh, let's move on to this one and see how that goes. It's not terrible. Okay, there there goes the chocolate. It makes the chocolate kind of delay a little bit. It's not terrible, but it just doesn't really do anything for it, if that makes any sense. It just doesn't emphasize anything. It's not like the, the frappe one where it actually did something for it. And honestly, I 
feel like I need to clean my palate at this point. Because that beer kind of lingers a bit. Uh, I forgot what that's called. It actually has a name for it. But yeah, I have water like standing by. Cleanse the palate. Alrighty, so. Um, hmm. It wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. But it just wasn't something that I think would actually uh, work. Like, it's not something that I would sit there and vape and all that kind of thing. So, with that being said, we're going to try rectum balls, which is a key lime pie. And see how that works out with this. I feel like it might be a long shot as well, like the cream, but we'll see. Oh, wow. That turned it into like a milk chocolate. Because, like, I have a lot of, like, creams and sort of things in there. Like, there's a lot of creamy boost behind it. So, it's really, really, like, it brought out the creaminess and the chocolate. Made it more like a milk chocolate. Like, that that tang from the, the key lime really doesn't do anything for it. Does It, it doesn't ruin it. But it does, uh, the creaminess does add to it quite a bit. Oh, my God. That was actually really good. Uh, Okay, this is gonna be the ruiner because we have psycho curler in here. I gotta check my wicks because I haven't checked them in a bit. Yeah, we're good enough for this. It won't be a full. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not risk to try it. But yeah, that last one was pretty good. The citrus didn't do anything for it, but the creaminess. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, May, if you guys want some rectum balls, reserve some uh, some chocolate eye ales for you, and yeah. Yeah, I'm really realizing I am not an IPA guy. I am not a fruit beer guy. I'll drink them. I'll try them out. Maybe I'll find something I like eventually. But I'm just finding myself not liking that. Like I'm liking more ales. I'm liking uh, sours. I'll give you that. I'll I'll try some sours. I've tried one so far, and it was puckery as all shit, but it was still pretty good. Um, I've done porters. I've done uh, stouts. I've done Belgians. Quads is something that I need to try at some point. But, yeah. And speaking of quads, I think I actually did buy one for this uh, this round of beers that I'm doing here within the next couple of weeks. So, let's go with some Psycho Curler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, even like it kind of went into my nose a little and it just turned it into a complete milk chocolate. Oh my God. I have things I want to vape with this right now. And like, I'm going to probably finish this beer normally, uh, like the last couple of weeks since I've been doing IPAs, I'm not going to lie. I'm not an IPA guy. I'm finding that out more and more with every IPA I try. I just don't do that hoppiness very well. But this, I for sure will finish drinking. The last ones I've, I've sadly, sadly will admit I've had to dump out. But this, oh my god, excitement! All right, so that was beer, and yeah, pick you up some of this. It's a brown ale or chocolate ale from Boulevard in uh. Burp. Sorry, chocolate ale, limited release. So hopefully you can pick yourself up some and try it out. I'm going to be honest. I really am enjoying this beer. Uh, that that weird smell that I get in there, it's something I could look over as overall the beer itself. It's really good. It has a really good chocolate. It's uh, It's got like the bitterness of a dark chocolate, but then it has a nice creamy finish. And with some of the vapes that I uh, tried with it, just completely added to like that milk chocolate. It almost reminds me of like... Uh, like if you get like hot cocoa and dump a little bit of cinnamon in there, golden. Like, you know, you put a cinnamon stick in there just to add a little bit of spiciness. Oh, my God. So good. So, so good. All righty. So that was the beer. We are going to finish it here. I'm glad for uh, me being able to do this because, honestly, I've been having issues with my PC. Luckily, I have a new guy, but I still am working on getting that one put together. I got one more part to add to it. And next week, hopefully, I'll have flawless videos to where there's not a whole lot of issues going on but yeah thank you for joining me and as always you know clownvapes.com check me out i got a bunch of new stuff i just added the uh this past week i just added the whatchamacallit the l thunder 21 700 which i might pick one up 
for review purposes, I love the Alt Thunder 2700. Cannot wait to try that one. Uh, what else do I have going on? Clown Vapes on Instagram. Go check me out. I always got things going on on there. Go check out Vaping with the Omis on Frame Janklin's channel. Those guys, fun time, always makes for a good Monday. You know what I'm saying? Wolf Bite uh, radio show on Vape Radio on at noons, which is awesome because uh, it was kind of a pain trying to wake up that early to listen to my own show. But and I can imagine that for other people. I mean, especially like on the on like, you know, the West Coast. It was like on at five in the morning for them. So I can imagine that being not so much fun. Um, What else? Uh, yeah, go check me out on Facebook, Clown Crew, go join, go hit me up on there. I keep up with my news mostly on there at this point, even though I do more on Instagram, which is like odd. But yeah, I just tend to post more on Instagram of just what things I got going on personally, like when it comes to vaping. But then on face on the Facebook page, I tend to have more like the business end of things if you guys want to keep up with that. So yeah, as always, mix on, vape on. Ba 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 